Llama 3, Scaling Open LLMs to AGI was published on Thursday, April 18th, 2024. Meta shows that scaling won't be a limit for Open LLM players in the near future. In January, Mark Zuckerberg gave an off-the-cuff update on the state of their AI efforts, claiming that they will release open source AGI in the next few years. A core criticism of the open LLM ecosystem is as to if they can continue to scale their models with hyperscalers like Google or OpenAI. In 2024, we've got access to multiple open weight models well over the 100 billion parameter range, and we've learned that we will take a step to 400 billion parameters with Llama 3. Continuing this to next year, we could easily see an open model with parameter counts similar to GPT-4 at 1 trillion. Every scaling step that open models take makes the proposition of defeating open models by scaling and unlocking even more emergent capabilities all the more costly. This trend is not about AGI at all, but people will use it as marketing. Today, Meta released its Llama 3 model, a large step in their vision. Largely, it has delivered solid performance evaluation and release vibes for the base and aligned model versions. The base models available today, 8B and 70B parameters, are clear incremental steps up for the open ecosystem on raw performance, but maybe not efficiency, and the aligned models look much better than Llama 2 Chat's brief refusal disaster. The most important things about this release are scaling and more of the same open LLM model fatigue. The other details are interesting, but mostly are technical details. Meta is leaning into vibes. We set out to build the best open models that are on par with the best proprietary models available today and distribution. Illama 3 will soon be available on all major platforms, including cloud providers, model API providers, and much more. Illama 3 will be everywhere, pre-training data and basic evals. This is the core part of Meta's releases, so pushing a ton of tokens through base language models because most players in the open LLM community don't have enough compute to do so. The three models are all training on a ton of data. The 8B model stands out a lot less among its peers. The 70B and pending 400B are the most important part of this release. Another missing piece which could have really stood out for the local community is a smaller model, say 1B parameters, given that other major players like Mistral are yet to release a model there. As a reminder, I'm trying to track the long-term trends of artificial intelligence. All of these models will be used extensively, but I'm trying to assess the fundamental limits of Meta's training infrastructure. By training on the most data, the 8 billion model is likely the best model for local large language model users, but I am not seeing that Meta is above average at all in terms of compute efficiency. It just seems like Meta has more compute, which is the simplest way to win. To see this, here is the 8 billion model compared with some peers. See figure one. The numbers that Meta highlights in the blog post look decent for the 8B model where they compare to open models. The numbers look pretty crazy for the 70B model where they are they're comparable to the middle tier of closed API models. Competing here with open weights will substantially kneecap the growth of API providers. Self-hosting with weights is way cheaper, even if it is slightly more annoying to set up than using an API. See figure two. If you look at MMLU, the models largely track in a per-compute sense. With Llama 3, the likes of DBRX and Mixtral 8 by 22B look way more in distribution within the open LLM ecosystem. DBRX looked like a total outlier disclosing 12T training tokens, but now all these models look like a new normal. Even XI's Gruck 1 with 314B parameters total, tilde 80B of which are active at inference, is now in distribution. If Llama 3400B is available as open weights, see figure 3. Meta's models and the commitment to better inference time performance at the cost of training costs completely go against any notion of chinchilla optimal training dataset size from the blog post. Both our 8B and 70B parameter models continued to improve log linearly after we trained them on up to 15T tokens. Larger models can match the performance of these smaller models with less training compute, but smaller models are generally preferred because they are much more efficient during inference. Training on so many tokens makes the idea real that you should train on all the data you have or you'll be behind the competition. The 8B model should be trained on 200B tokens to be chinchilla optimal. The change here was illustrated nicely by Sasha Rush. See figure four. As for what data they use, it's the normal story where they disclose almost nothing with a few interesting nuggets. A few details caught my eye on the data set. The first is LLM filtering of pre-training data. We found that previous generations of Llama are surprisingly good at identifying high quality data, hence we use Llama 2 to generate the training data for the text quality classifiers that are powering Llama 3. This is an offline way of doing what Microsoft's row models do and fits in with a trend we have heard about via large companies pre-training on synthetic data itself. Another detail builds on a recent paper showing that fewer truncations helped performance too. 
We trained the models on sequences of 8,192 tokens using a mask to ensure self-attention does not cross document boundaries. Long context behavior is very important, so it'll be interesting to see if Meta can extend the context length of these models by training on a few more hundred billion tokens of long context. Many fine-tuning recipes people use online to extend context lengths don't get anywhere near close to the quality of models like Claude 3, so they maybe just haven't cracked the technical challenge yet at Meta. Otherwise, they used four times more code data than Llama 2 because it helped with reasoning evaluations. The models don't all have the same data date cutoff, which points to some weirdness, like the 8B model is documented as March 2023 and 70B as December 2023, so I expected March 2023 in the model card to be a typo. If not, it seems like the 8B model has been done for a long time and they've been experimenting with bigger models. Regardless, it's not true that the 8B and 70B are trained on the same data. Edit the cutoff date has been confirmed as March 2023, so expect a newer version soon. This is the primary reason that I think the 8B model can be outclassed in the near future. I'm sure Meta is already thinking about retraining it. Alignment and human evaluations. The fine-tuning section of the blog post leaves a lot to be speculated. In the Llama 2 paper, this was the most impressive section. The core part is emphasis mine. Our approach to post-training is a combination of supervised fine-tuning, rejection sampling, proximal policy optimization, and direct policy optimization. The quality of the prompts that are used in SFT and the preference rankings that are used in PPO and DPO has an outsized influence on the performance of aligned models. Some of our biggest improvements in model quality came from carefully curating this data and performing multiple rounds of quality assurance on annotations provided by human annotators. Recall their staged training from the Llama 2 paper, this almost surely is something similar, or that they used some methods for one of the models and not for the other. We all know Meadow was rushing this out, so it could be that each of the 8B and 7DB models only uses one of DPO or PPO after rejection sampling. Discussing with some authors after Llama 2's release, rejection sampling was their simplest method to get working in a stable manner. Rejection sampling is taking all your model's completions from the IFT distribution, ranking via a reward model, and then training on the top N percent of data as normal instruction tuning. I hope we'll see similar plots for the stage training of Llama 3. If I had to speculate, there are two ways to look at this one. Ordering based on some performance, and two, trying lots of things on short time frames before more human data is collected. Regardless, I would expect the order of operations to be for each model, IFT, rejection sampling, DPO, PPO. At each step, the method gains a little bit more leeway to explore. I'd guess they did DPO on their own model generations and not human data or GPT-4 data, which makes it very different from other open models. See figure five? There's also a very familiar data comment from the blog post when compared to Llama 2. The fine-tuning data includes publicly available instruction data sets, as well as over 10M human annotated examples. Neither the pre-training nor the fine-tuning data sets include meta-user data. The data for Llama 2 chat was also a mix, but the private human data is doing the work that could make these fine-tuned score more highly on Chatbot Arena than other fine-tuned models we've seen recently. The key word is still could as Meta is yet to release a fine-tuned model that people love. Recall the data from Llama 2, uh, see figure six. Here goes the price calculator again. If we assume about $4 per prompt and four turns per conversation, this puts us at about $10 million for preference data. At this point, Meta may have dogfooded this internally rather than paid scale, but scale may announce this soon. Finally, while Q is mostly bullshit, the ideas around it apply to the basic ideas of why reasoning can be improved with methods like RLHF that Meta mentions. And quoting the blog post on code and reasoning, emphasis mine. Learning from preference rankings via PPO and DPO also greatly improved the performance of Llama 3 on reasoning and coding tasks. We found that if you ask a model a reasoning question that it struggles to answer, the model will sometimes produce the right reasoning trace. The model knows how to produce the right answer, but it does not know how to select it. Training on preference rankings enables the model to learn how to select it. The highlighted text is the standout alignment intuition from the blog post. While not provable in the literature, it aligns with the many vertical bar papers in this area in the last few months from Meta Janai. Finally, the human evaluations Meta has listed here are very strong. I certainly wouldn't have expected them to have beaten Claude 3 Sonnet already by a decent margin. The other results don't really matter as much given the pace of progress in AI. The evaluation prompts used are similar to instruct GPT categories with more coding and a more uniform distribution. However, Meta had results similar to this in the Llama 2 paper and folks didn't love Llama 2 chat. I hope they succeed and continue to open up their process. See figure seven. 
I'm excited that Meta is releasing open weight safety filters so people can better understand the multi-stage process of ensuring a safe LLM application. It's a classifier that says which type of risk could emerge from a given piece of text so moderation can be automated by category. Applications like ChatGPT have used these since day one, but they've mostly been ignored. Chatting with Meta, AI, and Llama 370B, Instruct AE. I started on Meta's new chat website thinking it would just be a couple of model wrappers. Asking my normal questions, I start easy with what is interconnects.ai. Interconnects.ai is a platform that offers thoughtful insights into artificial intelligence through articles and podcasts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is run by Nathan Lambert, who has a background in robotics and machine learning too. Interconnects.ai also has a substack where it publishes its content too. Meta's AI system offers interleaved references like perplexity or something. I, I wasn't expecting this, but it makes the system much more grounded in real information. Next, I switch to Replicates hosting with the same question. Interconnects.ai is an AI-powered platform that enables humans to have conversations with AI models like me in a more natural and engaging way. It's a platform that allows developers, researchers, and users to interact with AI models through text-based conversations, similar to how we're chatting right now. Interconnects AI provides a range of features and tools that make it easy to build, train, and deploy AI models that can understand and respond to human input in a more human-like way. The platform, that didn't work. The model then corrected it. I apologize for the mistake. Yes, you are correct. Interconnects.ai is a project written by Nathan Lambert, and I'm one of the AI models that is part of this project. Nathan is the creator of this platform, and I'm grateful to be a part of it. As a conversational AI, I'm designed to engage with users like you in a more natural and human-like way. Nathan's work on Interconnects AI has enabled me to learn and improve from our conversations, though if the model is designed to work in a retrieval setting, the out-of-the-box performance for fine tunes could be degraded. Someone should do a thorough evaluation of refusals as well, given the history here. Same Llama license, mostly. The license is really similar to Llama 2. In some ways, it seems like an attempted ecosystem takeover attempt from Meta. It doesn't matter if all the models are on hugging face, if they're all called Llama 3, Tulu 370B. Yeah, he's from the license. If you use the Llama materials to create, train, fine-tune, or otherwise improve an AI model, which is distributed or made available, you shall also include Llama 3 inches at the beginning of any such AI model name. Much like the terms of service for ChatGPT, I expect only organizations to care particularly about these terms. This matters, but they're too onerous to win the mindshare battle that is individual action. The final point people will be upset about is that we still only can use Llama outputs to improve Llama models. Here's a diff of the licenses. See figure eight. Unfortunately, they're always going to get complaints about this, even more so when the blog post says we are embracing the open source ethos of releasing early and often. Not clear where the open source applies here. See figure nine. The healthy open LLM ecosystem, the Llama 3400B model is still training and coming soon. It's not 100% confirmed that it's using the same data set, nor confirmed that it'll be released openly. The scores for the coming 400B model, which is still training, are already comparable to important closed models. See figure 10. A comparison to closed models at similar scales was compiled by Jim Fan. See figure 11. At the end of the day, Meta has promised many more models. Multilinguality, multimodality, longer context, and more has been promised by Zuck and Co. This is a big step of commitment for the open LLM ecosystem, as Meta has taken longer to ship their follow-up models than anyone else in the space, but not a guarantee that things will change. In 2025 to 2026, I expect some of the venture-backed startups exploring open weight LLMs to look closely at their business model. Alama 3's commitment from Meta makes this moment the healthiest the open LLM ecosystem has ever been, and probably the healthiest it will be. If Llama 3 costs $100 million to train, Llama 4 could be closer to a billion. Only big tech companies can do that, and they're beholden to their shareholders. There's a big opportunity to train small models that is currently not being seized by Meta, Mistral, or anyone else serious about open weights. This type of model enables many different workflows immediately. Meta's Genai organization is a very different place now than when Llama and Llama 2 were created. More mature, but that comes with more politics. The timeline between the first two versions almost made them concurrent models. This third version, while it looks similar, has gone through a much more complicated release process. The timeline for Llama 4 will show us if they turned a corner and we should bet on them. Otherwise, Meta will pop up now and then, but not be the focal point of the open LLM space. Mistral's focus on efficiency and velocity will serve a broader market than just scaling. 
The 400B model is going to put a lot of pressure on closed providers if it's truly GPT-4 quality and commercially licensed. I'm not sure it'll have the same license, but they decided to punt that problem to the future. Mark Zuckerberg is listed as an author of Llama 3, so you know how invested he is in this. He said that the Llama 4 goal is agentic behavior, so we'll really be brushing up against the AGI narrative. Thanks for listening and have a great day.